Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to one and all as we gather on this Thanksgiving Eve service. As we gather tonight, we do give thanks and praise to our Lord for all the gifts that he does give to us. As we gather tonight, we may have a long list of things we can think about that the Lord does bless us with. Um, in our sermon tonight, we'll kind of think about the different categories some of these gifts do fall in as we reflect upon the things that we are thankful to our Lord and Savior for this evening. Uh, as we gather tonight, we do uh, give our Lord our, our thanks and praise for all his gifts. Um, our service tonight is printed. Um, hopefully everyone received a bulletin, or at least you can look on with someone else tonight. Uh, apologize for running short there for a bit, but I think we have enough to make ends meet here. But otherwise, yes, we'll follow the order as printed in our service. Uh, our hymns are listed there as well that we will sing out of our hymnal. Also wanted to note that our offering tonight is being collected for the York Family Resource Center, a special offering tonight. So however you'd like to contribute to that, we will collect that offering for that organization tonight. So with that, let us worship our Lord tonight and give him thanks for all the blessings that he does give to us in life. So may the Lord bless us tonight. We begin our, our service this evening with our opening hymn, number 892. Come, you thankful people, come. May the Lord bless us. this evening we do gather in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
standing in the presence of Almighty God, we are aware of his great blessings in our lives. Yet we often forget to live our lives in thankfulness to him. Let us confess our sins to God, seeking his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we confess to you our sins. We have no excuses. We have sinned against you and each other by our failure to love you and each other as you have loved us. You have blessed our lives, and so often we have been ungrateful. You have blessed us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. In turn, we have failed to be a blessing to others or to bless your holy name. For our sinfulness and our lack of thankfulness for all your blessings, we deserve your punishment. We are sorry for our sins and ask you to forgive us and enable us to live our lives in thankfulness to you. Jesus knows your sinfulness, yet he still loves you. He has borne your sins in his body on the cross. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. We remain standing as we sing the next hymn, number 893, Sing to the Lord of Harvest. of love and praise with joyful hearts and voices your alleluia's raise by him the rolling seasons in fruitful order move sing to the lord of harvest a joyous song of love. God makes the clouds rain goodness, the deserts bloom and spring. The hills leap up in gladness, the valleys laugh and sing. God fills them with his fullness, all things with large increase. He crowns the year with blessing, with plenty and with peace. Bring to the sacred altar the gifts his goodness gave. The golden sheaves of harvest, the souls Christ died to save. Your hearts lay down before him when at his feet you fall. And with your lives adore him who gave his life for all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. 
the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 20. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be no made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my glory will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for tonight's gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. No, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? 
Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? He said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues as we give thanks for the work of God our Father. What is the first article of the Apostles' Creed? And what does this mean? still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides with, with all that I need to support this body and life. This is most certainly true. Congregation may be seated. The children are invited forward at this time for the children's message. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone tonight? Good to see you guys in church tonight. Is it kind of nice to gather for a church service at night? Yeah. No? <laughs> Especially after eating some nice soup, too, right? Well, okay. Well, tonight we gather for our Thanksgiving Eve service. And so tonight we're thinking about all the things God gives us, all the gifts He gives us, all the things we can be thankful for. As we think about Thanksgiving Day, maybe we have... Um, things that we do that everyone else doesn't do. In other words, maybe your family does certain things and some other people don't. You maybe go to some place, people's places, you do certain things. But usually every, all of us do something that is similar. And that would be we eat, right? Yeah. And what we eat may vary, but when it comes to Thanksgiving, we usually eat and we usually eat good food, right? Lots of good food. So as we think about Thanksgiving time, it's a time to give thanks, and also it's a time to give thanks for food. And something that we normally do when it comes to giving thanks for food is we pray, right? Just like before our soup supper tonight, we prayed. And oftentimes we have what was called a common table prayer. It says, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. And then there's the last part, right? Oh, give, okay, there's an amen, okay. But there's a last part that says, um, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So there's kind of two parts to it. Sometimes we say just the first part before eating. Sometimes we say the last part at the end. But I wanted us to focus on the last part. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It's important to pray, right? When we have meals, it's important to pray to God and give him thanks for those good gifts he gives, especially during this time, especially for a Thanksgiving meal. So I wanted to focus on these words. Um, for his mercy endures forever. Can you guys say that with me? For his mercy endures forever. And so when I'm going to point you guys like this here, I want you guys to say that, okay? So, for his mercy endures forever. You're supposed to say it, okay? <laughs> for his mercy endures forever. Okay, so I'll say my part. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Thanks for the help. Let's try that one more time. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Good job. We're going to say that a lot more times. I brought with me tonight Psalm 136. It's a thanksgiving hymn. And the hymn says a lot of things that God's Old Testament people were thankful for. And each verse starts out with things that God had, did for them, had done for them, things they could be thankful for, and then it ends with the words, 
for his mercy endures forever. So what we're going to do, I'm going to read through this. I'm going to read the first part of the verse, and you guys are to say your part, but hang in there. This is long, okay? Stick with me through all of it. You ready? Let's see how this goes. So, beginning, Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. Keep going. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him who alone does great wonders. To him who by wisdom made the heavens. To him who laid out the earth above the waters. To him who made great lights. The sun to rule by day. The moon and stars to rule by night. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn. And brought out Israel from among them. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea in two. We're halfway there. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. To him who led his people through the wilderness. To him who struck down great kings. And slew famous kings. Shihon, king of the Amorites. And Og, king of Bashan. And gave their land as a heritage. A heritage to Israel, his servant. Who remembered us in a lowly state. Almost there. And rescued us from our enemies. Who gives food to all flesh. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, the God of heaven. You did it. Did you get get tired by the end? No? Good. The point of it is, sometimes, and this was a long hymn to do that with, sometimes we kind of get tired of giving thanks. No? Sometimes we maybe say when it's time to eat, well, do we have to pray again? Or maybe we have leftovers and we pray the same prayer over the leftovers. But so sometimes in life we get tired of saying thanks or we forget to say thanks. But this psalm tonight reminds us that God, Jesus, never tires of giving us his gifts. So this refrain that you guys said, his mercy endures forever, really kind of says his love endures forever. It goes on and on and on. Every day the Lord gives us gifts gives us what we need to bless us. And so tonight we are in church giving him thanks because he's the giver of all good things. So again, as we think about tonight, as you think about eating, as you think about giving thanks this Thanksgiving season, remember that the Lord, his love for us endures forever. Okay, you guys did a great job. Let's go to the time with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all the gifts you give me every day. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. Our service tonight continues with our sermon hymn, which is number 894, For the Fruits of His Creation. of his creation. 
salvation. Thanks be to God for his gifts to every nation. Thanks be to God for the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping through your needs in earth safe keeping thanks be to God in the just reward of labor God's will is done in the help we give our neighbor God's will is done in our worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvest we are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvest of the Spirit Thanks be to God for the good we all inherit. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, as we gather on this Thanksgiving Eve, we give you humble thanks for all the good things you give to us. Help us always live in a relationship with you that sees you as the giver and provider of all that we need. In response, may our thoughts, our words, and our lives be filled with your praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we gather for tonight's Thanksgiving Eve service, we gather in a spirit of thankfulness. We think about all the things that the Lord gives us. We think about all the things He gives us for our daily needs. And so it's good for us tonight to pause and take some time to think about all the gifts that God gives us. In a few moments, I would like us to actually pause and spend some silent time in reflection, thinking about all the gifts that God does give to us, maybe 30 seconds or so. During this time, I'd like you to think of three things that you are thankful for, maybe kind of like the first three things that come to your mind, things that you are thankful for as you thank the Lord for his gifts tonight. Of course, you may be thankful for more than three things, but whatever comes to mind, three things. Think of three things that you are thankful for. If you want, you can jot them down on a piece of paper. If you want, you can just kind of make a mental note. And if you want, during this time, you can close your eyes too as you think about three things that you are thankful for. So, for the next 30 seconds or so, think about three things that you are thankful for. Ready? Okay, go. How are we doing? As the time of reflection comes to its conclusion, hopefully you had enough time to think about three things that you are thankful for. As you think about those three things now, I would like you to think about how you might categorize them. 
And more specifically, I'd like you to think about how they might be categorized when it comes to the Apostles' Creed. In other words, as you think about the three things you are thankful for, are they first article gifts like food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, land or animals, and other things that you need for your body and life? Does your list of three things include second article gifts? Gifts such as the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, salvation from sin, death, and the devil. As you think about your list of three things, does it include third article gifts? That would be faith that receives your salvation, faith that enables you to live for your Lord, or faith that gives you things like love, joy, or peace. So, as you review your list, are you thankful for first article gifts? Are you thankful for second article gifts? Are you thankful for third article gifts? Or does your list include things from two categories or all three categories? In case you're wondering, there is no right or wrong answer here. But I have us do this little exercise tonight for really two reasons. Number one, it is good that we actually stop and take time and think about what we are thankful to the Lord for. And number two, many of the things that we are thankful for in life are first article gifts. Gifts such as life itself, family, health, jobs, a place to live, food and clothing, and the many physical possessions that we receive. And this is not to say that being thankful for first article gifts is wrong. Actually, it's to say that normally our worship services and our sermons focus on second article gifts, that being forgiveness of sins and life that our Lord gives us for eternity. Of course, these gifts are important because they last for eternity, but it is to say we oftentimes overlook or not give enough time to first article gifts. And so tonight, as we once again celebrate Thanksgiving, it is geared towards celebrating and giving thanks for first article gifts. Gifts of food and crops. Gifts of country and land. Gifts of life and the things needed for it. As we turn to our Old Testament reading tonight from Deuteronomy chapter 8, it is easy to see that it is filled with first article gifts. As Moses speaks to God's people tonight, he reviews their 40-year journey in the desert. During this time, they survived on manna. During this time, their clothing did not wear out. And during this time, their feet did not swell. And the reason for the manna their clothing not wearing out, their feet not swelling, was not because of them. They did not produce the manna. They did not manufacture extra rugged clothing. And they did not design their first ever extra comfy gel-infused shoes either. No. God's Word tonight makes it clear that these first article gifts were directly from Him. And the Lord is making an important point tonight through Moses because God's people were about to enter a different environment. They were about to leave the scarcity of the desert and go into the abundance of the promised land. And in this land, the Lord would shower upon them the abundance of first article gifts. In our reading tonight, God's word says in verses 7 through 9, A good land flowing with water. A land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates, olive trees and honey. A land whose stones are iron and whose hills you can dig copper. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity and you will lack nothing. This is to say that the Lord was about to abundantly shower his people with all these gifts. 
But the warning that the Lord gives his people is found right after tonight's reading. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 11 and following, God's word goes on to say, Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply, and when your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God. Beware, lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. And you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them. I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. So this is to say that the Lord would graciously shower his people with first article gifts, but in so doing, he wanted his people to learn that all these gifts came from him. He wanted his people to remember that they were dependent on him. He wanted his people to be in a relationship with him as the giver of life. This was important because God's people would be tempted to turn away from Him, to forget the Lord and their true dependence on Him, to think that their gifts were a product of their own doing. And the ultimate danger was this. They would forget the Lord. They would no longer live under Him. They would no longer worship Him. And they would end up losing their relationship with Him. In the end, they would perish. Which sadly would eventually happen to the nation of Israel over the course of the years. As we gather tonight, we do rightly gather to give thanks and praise to our Lord for all the gifts He gives to us. It's a good time to stop and thank Him for all those things. But as we gather tonight, we also know that during the other 364 days of the years, there's oftentimes we forget to give thanks to God for his gifts. Like the nine other lepers in our gospel reading tonight, we often forget to see the Lord as the giver of all things. And at first glance, it may not seem like a big deal. Forgetting the Lord may not seem like a big deal. Not being as thankful as we should be may not seem like a big deal. Not living under Him all the days of our life, seeing Him as that giver, doesn't seem like that big a deal. Initially, it may seem a bit trivial. We might want to dismiss it all and say, yes, that may be right, but it could be a lot worse. But God's Word won't let us say that tonight. It says that it is not okay to forget the Lord. For if we forget the Lord, who is the giver of all good things, we will no longer look to Him. We will no longer depend on Him. We will no longer live under Him. We will no longer worship Him. And staying on that course, we will ultimately lose our relationship with Him. Without a relationship with Him, His Word says that we too will so God's word says something to us tonight it takes us to his word in James 1 17 that says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights let me say that again James 1 17 says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights. Which tonight reminds us of two things. Number one, it reminds us tonight that God the Father is truly the giver of all good things. They come from His hand. They come to us through His design of this life. Number two, these words remind us tonight that the Father is not only the giver of first article gifts, He's also the giver of second article gifts too. 
Second article gifts that come from above, come down from Him in the person in the work of Jesus. As Jesus came down, as He comes down from above, He says in John 10.10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And so on this Thanksgiving Eve, Jesus gives you an abundant life by living a perfect life for you. For all the times you were not thankful, He was. For all the times you gave credit where credit was not due, He did not. For all the times you have not lived a life of dependence under the Father, He has. And tonight He reminds you that He gives it all to you. He did it all for you, but He also gives it all to you. Jesus gives His life to you. His life that says your sins are forgiven. His life that says your past is covered. His life that says your present and your future is always lived in my grace-filled promises and provisions. And for these added second article gifts, We are thankful tonight because they go along with all the first article gifts as well. And we can also think about a third article gift tonight too. That is a faith that receives it all, a faith that acknowledges it all, a faith that gives thanks. And so our journey in this life continues tonight. And as it continues tonight, we do remember the gifts that the Lord has given us We can also think back on our lives for all the blessings He has given us. For some of us, we can think back more than 40 years. 40 years, the Israelites from the desert. Some of us, we can think back more than 40 years, but again, thinking about all the ways, all the situations in life that God has blessed us. We can call His gifts that got us through childhood. His gifts that got us through high school and college. His gifts that blessed us in marriage and parenting and earning a living. His gifts that got us through surgeries in certain times. His gifts that guided us through trying times and doubtful times. His gifts that come to us through other people too. His gifts that He has not only given us in the past, but His gifts that He will continue giving us into the future as well. And so tonight we continue to see the Lord as the giver of all our good gifts. He is the giver, we are the receiver. And with Him as the giver and us ourselves being the receiver, our journey in life life continues with Him. Our relationship in life continues with Him, a relationship that continues to pray to Him, give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread that He gives, all out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in us. And for that, it is not only our duty, but it is our privilege to give Him thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service tonight continues as we collect our offering. Once again, as that's being collected, we ask all members and guests to please sign the record of fellowship forms found near the center aisle.
In our prayers for this evening, we include a prayer petition for Les Weber, who will be undergoing a series of, of surgeries here in the next few days. So we pray for his um, surgeries that they go well, uh, blessings upon the surgeons and for his health and healing during this time. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Please stand. Almighty God, we raise our voices in thanksgiving for your blessings of both body and soul. Once again, the earth has yielded its increase by your undeserved kindness. Help us always remember you as the giver of all good things, live our lives depending on your gracious care, and worship you and live in the relationship that you have established with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, Continue to give us a hunger and a thirst for your word, that we might hear it and find life in living it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, watch over the homes of your people, that they would be places of blessing and love. We pray that husbands and wives would cherish each other and honor their vows of faithfulness. We also ask you to bless the children given to their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, that you have kept us safe from our enemies. Continually defend us against all who threaten violence in war, in war. Bring the warring of nations to an end and make the na nations to dwell in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, as you've had compassion on the ten lepers, bring healing to all in need according to your gracious will. Deliver them from their afflictions. Also give them a patient heart in adversity, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and peace in your promises. Especially we pray for your blessings upon Les as he undergoes surgeries during these next few days. Grant the surgeons wisdom and ability to do what they need to do and grant him a good and speedy recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, graciously remember the needs of your children. Sustain the weary with hope. Lead your church to be generous in their support of the poor and the hungry. And bring to an end all jealousy and strife. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless those who mourn with confidence in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Receive our thanks together with the whole church for those who have gone before us in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever else things you know that we need, we ask of you, O Lord. We ask that you would grant them for your sake and for the blessings that we have in Christ. Your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, number 895. Now thank we all our God.
through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven. The one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Please be seated. <clears throat> 